Hello and congratulations on your 90 day Mimecast web security service. This is the quick start guide. We'll take you through the basic configuration needed to onboard all of your users and start protecting them in nine minutes or less. First, let's go take a look at your Mimecast web security prerequisites. This will take you through what you need to be able to access the administration console, firewall rules that might be needed, API URLs that you'll need to get to, as well as the Mimecast security agent for Windows requirements, anything beyond Windows 7, as well as a pro version or enterprise version are supported. Next thing we're going to do is go and log into our Mimecast administration portal by going to login.mimecast.com. Entering in your own username and password. We're going to need to use the administration console, of course. So click on administration console. Clicking on administration brings up the administration menu items for you. Of course, in this guide, we're going to show you how to get quickly up and running and protect everybody in your organization. If you wanted to take advantage of Active Directory groups or individual user scoped policies, you can achieve that with directory synchronization with an LDAP or an Azure Active Directory synchronization. There's a link to our community pages explaining how to achieve directory integration in the description below. Let's continue on enabling web security for all of your users. Checking out the dashboard, this is where we would see graphs of our total access by our users, but we'll also check out our exceptions. That's first on the list of things to do. So my company is called Probatio. Here is where you would add exceptions for things like internal networks. So I'm going to add my Probatio internal network. And again, I'm going to select domain to make sure that my Probatio.local domain can still be resolved via my VPN or while my users are in the office. Adding that is really easy. Once it's added, you can of course add any more exceptions. Exceptions by best practice are really sites that you absolutely know and trust, even sites or internal domains that you are likely to curate all of the content on and control those completely yourself. Now that's taken care of, let's take a look at our default category policy. So within web security policies, you'll see that there's already a default category filter there for you, and this applies to everyone. So once you get that Mimecast security agent installed, of course, users will be able to access the allowed categories and they'll be blocked from accessing anything on the blocked category filter list. If you want to edit this yourself and change things, I see on there cryptocurrency is allowed. I want to block that. Let's first check out the security categories. So everything from anonymizers, botnets, hacking, phishing and frauds, compromised sites, spam sites, malware and attacker controlled infrastructure will be blocked. Potentially malicious sites, we leave that unticked for our customers to decide their level of risk appetite. For our content categories, we also by default block everything in our adult extreme category, not safe for work categories. If you want to search for anything, for instance, my users don't need to do anything to do with cryptocurrency, so I'm going to type that in to search it and block it. You'll notice with the default settings as well, the legal risk will have all of those illegal sites and illegal drug sites blocked, as well as in our productivity. We do by default block web mail because that is a really common vector for downloading malware or of course exfiltrating company secrets. So we by default recommend that to be blocked. If you use Office 365, do note that this will also block Office 365. So you will need to create an allow policy for the Office 365 domains. I'm going to hit save and close because I made that change to block those cryptocurrency sites as well. 
If you wanted to create a blocker allow list to allow specific webmail services, you would do it by selecting the type blocker allow right there. Next, we're going to configure our Mimecast security agent settings. This is the agent that gets installed to endpoint machines and allows us to secure the network traffic on those machines. Firstly, we're going to make sure that transparent user identification is enabled. That means if you have Active Directory synced with Mimecast and the machine is being logged in with an Active Directory user account, then we'll just detect who the user is and apply policies based on that specific user. You will need to come in and create an authentication key. This allows the agent to initially contact the Mimecast API and just download the agent by clicking the button there. Once that little agent package has downloaded, just open up the folder wherever you downloaded it to and we'll go ahead and extract the MSI installers. Do be advised that installing the Mimecast security agent will require a reboot on Windows. Okay, go ahead and extract the zip. Now I'm using an x64 version of Mimecast web security because my workstation here is 64-bit Windows 10. If you get a UAC prompt, accept the elevation of privilege and then click next. Browse to that security key file, which we call a customer key. So go back to where you downloaded it, open up that folder and select the customer key from the Mimecast security agent configuration folder. Hit next. I'm going to install to the default directory, but you can install it somewhere else if you want to and then hit install. Now that does take a moment or two to install, so I've sped up that process. Also on our Mimecast community website, we have excellent resources for being able to install the agent silently for your users using a group policy object. Now that Mimecast security agent is installed, here comes that reboot I told you about. I'll see you on the other side. And we're back. Now, let's take a look and see what happens if we try to go to gmail.com. Gmail being in that web security category means that this URL is going to be blocked because it matches the web-based email category. The Mimecast security agent is installed and running and you can see it down there in the taskbar. If you click on it, you'll be able to see that I'm actually using a non-domain joined machine so it's discovered who my local user is that's logged in again if it's a domain joined machine you should be able to use transparent user identification and if that's not possible then of course you can ask your users to log in so I can log in here with a directory account and of course you can provision them credentials directly within Mimecast using a Mimecast cloud account or you can simply synchronize with your domain and all authentications happen directly against that domain. We do not sync passwords for domain users. And now I'm logged in as a domain user and I'm authenticated on the machine. Again, I'm still going to be protected by that everyone policy, so within web security policies that everyone policy will still apply to me but within the, those activity reports you'll be able to see hey this is when my computer just started up it didn't know exactly who I was and then this is me when I'm once I'm logged into the Mimecast web security agent. Now the benefits of domain integration would allow me to start targeting policies to individual users or indeed Active Directory user groups. Great, so in nine short minutes we've been able to set up Mimecast web security for all of your users to provide protection against security related threats as well as enforce an acceptable use policy. On our Mimecast's central pages here you'll see many more resources to help you tune the Mimecast web security service to exactly your needs.